Hello, everyone. Yep, welcome uh, to this uh, microbit show. A little bit late. We had some uh, technical difficulties with our streaming machine. Didn't want to wake up. Uh, and that happened right before the show. So we're a bit late, uh, but we'll still do this uh, show and you'll find it on YouTube if you're watching this. Uh, we're covering the upcoming upgrade of Make Code. And this is going to be, um, we're going to be looking at functions today. If you have questions, the chat is open. So we can switch to the chat if you have, uh, if you want some comments. But otherwise, let's get down to it. So if you're going to, if you want to try this out, this is going to be at makecode.microbit.org slash beta. And that's where our beta is being updated pretty much daily with new features and bugs. Hi, Fishy. Um, yeah, functions. Oops, wasn't supposed to do that. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't have teen. I have, a, I have a teenager. He's not streaming. I'm, I'm the old guy streaming at the house. Uh, all right. Uh, so let's create a new project uh, today. We want to call it functions, and we're going to look at it. So the functions are not new. They are. Um, yeah, the the whole wake up thing. I don't know if we. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I don't try to wake them up anymore. All right. Functions. Functions are not new in make code. There's been functions since uh, the last release. If you go into advanced, you'll see that you can create a function here. They're very helpful. It's great. Pure science concept. Uh, you get taken to this list, uh, to this editor. The function used to only support arguments. For example, we could uh, we could do take a number and maybe take a sprite, and then this would translate into this code, and you can then do something like I want to take my sprite here and I want to move it by number. All right, so that's how this would work. So you would have to drag the parameters into your function. And then on the other side, you could do something like, well, first of all, we would create a sprite. Let's create a sprite here. Or we already have a sprite, my sprites. I call it my sprites. And I can go and that in on start, create my sprite, and maybe I have this super cool function called move one and I can move my sprite by one. The function lets you encapsulate code, reuse them. Um, and that's what you were able to do in the previous release of make code. Now we've added two new features um, to help you with uh, using functions. The first one is this icon here. Zoom in a bit. Uh, and this is basically collapsing. Collapsing is very interesting because imagine you have some pretty large amount of code here. So I'm just gonna copy paste this a few times. I imagine you've got a significant amount of text and it's getting cluttered and you've you know kind of lost track of where you are in the screen you can collapse and the second step you can also you have two options here in the menu you can collapse everything you can also expand everything what i like is for example to collapse and format my code now everything is nice and packed, and I can expand what I want and expand. Expansion is uh, one new feature that you're going to find in beta. And if you think you have, uh, if you have um, a lot of functions, you're going to be able to use that not just for functions, but uh, for function, it's quite obvious that you have an icon. 
All right, so that's uh, one of the first new features we have. The other feature we have, I'm going to create a new function for that. And its function is going to be called um, something think, simple. We're going to call it uh, about what I want to do here. I want to, well, let's call it add numbers. Three numbers. All right, I'm going to call it add three numbers. Or maybe, if, yeah, add, th add numbers. All right, so we have a function that's supposed to add two numbers. Uh, so I'm adding two arguments. And notice that I'm typically you would want to compute something and return it. So the new feature we're adding here, which has uh, been asked for a long time by our educators, so it's coming to you in beta, is return values. Now, how does this work? You don't have to specify the type in the editor, so you don't have to go here and do it. We will automatically infer it from I use the return block. So in this uh, function, you'll see there is a new block. And it has a slot here, and it's a return statement. So now I can do something like plus, and plus, and I can drag my two arguments. And I've got a nice little function that lets me add two numbers. So you'll be able, as soon as you'll use the return statement, your function is going to have a return type. Um, something to be aware of is that you need to make sure your function returns always the same type. So, for example, here, let's say I do, I do some kind of random. Oh yeah, no, let's write let's write a little random function here. Uh, well, okay, so so here, let's say I do some kind of uh, decision. It doesn't really matter what. Let's say I, I do some randomness here, and I. Now it's complaining. See, not all calls path return value. So if the program goes here, it returns a number. But if it comes here in the else statement, nothing happens. So you need to make sure that all your exit path of the function return the same type. In this case, I can, you know, for example, if I return zero here, it's going to be happy. Um, another common error is going to be to have incompatible types. So let's say, for example, I try to return a string. So here a number, here a string. Uh, you, you can't do that because of the way our language is typed. The function number had an invalid return type. But what we looked at is like, mm, OK, this is going to be a number function. It's going to return a number. Then here you return a string. And, and these are not compatible. So these are going to be two probably common errors you're going to you're going to do. The other one is if you click minus, you're returning nothing, which is also a possible valid way of return of exiting a function when you're when you have a function that doesn't return a parameter. It's kind of a shortcut to the, the exit. And now it's going to complain that you need to return a value. All right, let me clean that up. and move this out. All right, so what we've seen is a few new things. We've got collapsing going on. I can collapse this one, for example. Format my code. There's a rogue little block here. Let me format again. All right. So I've got all my functions here. So we got collapsing going on. We have return statements. That means your functions have return statement. Now, when you call those, what you'll see is you have two options. You can call a function with a return statement so that returns a value as a statement. That means you can stack it up just like the other blocks. You know, I can stack it up. Or option two, you can actually try to use the return value. 
So it's possible to ignore the return value. And sometimes this is very useful because your function returns something, but it's kind of optional. And uh, in some cases, you really want to store that value, let's say, now, in some kind of variable here. So I'm going to set a variable, and then I'm going to grab this function. That covers uh, a lot about the return, the functions. So to recap, we've got current return values. We got a new statement here. If your function has returned something, like this one returns a number, you will have two types of blocks. So the round blocks, we'll call them reporters, and they are they return a value. And then you have the statement blocks that you can stack with the other blocks. All functions now can be collapsed. And this really, you know, encourages people to use functions and you know build modularized code. As your program gets bigger and bigger, this is this is a very cool feature. We have context menu items to both expand and collapse old blocks. So you can look at that. And that's pretty much uh, all there is to say about the the function. It's uh, uh, it's a it's a change that uh, many educators have asked, um, and we're very happy to bring it to the next version of the microbit. We'll have um, so you'll be able to do functions that play with sprites or that manipulate an image. Um, so hopefully you can do that. You can do recursive functions, uh, just as I mentioned. So um, for example, if you want to do so recursive function is a recursive, and let's say it takes a number. It's a function that calls itself. Uh, so for example, I can say that if I'm going to get something like a math, if it did, no, that is here. Need a logic operator. I'm gonna say that if my nope. My number is greater than zero. And if the number is greater than zero, then I'm gonna call the function again. Uh, but then to make sure my recursion stops, I'm just gonna decrease it by one. Nope. Can see our new uh, our new latch on tag. Kind of shows you where it's going to latch. Otherwise, uh, I can do something like let me uh, that. So this function is going to just display numbers. It's going to display the number, and then if needed, it's going to display the number below and below and below. Um, you want to be careful with recursive functions because you might just run out of memory. I'm going to clean all this up. Uh, so if I call this function now, then it's recursively calling itself. Now, on the microbit, when you do recursive functions, you might run into memory issues because you're basically making every time you go deeper and deeper, your stack gets deeper. So you allocate a little bit of memory each time. I would not recommend to use that to print numbers uh, on the screen. I would probably recommend to use a loop, which is way more uh, memory efficient. Uh, but it is possible. So that's uh, that's all for today. As far as looking at the microbit beta for functions. If you've been using them, you'll see it's pretty much the same. We've got a few improvements, collapsing, turn statements, uh, and now actually it works very nicely for uh, recursive calls. And that's it for today. We're a bit late in the show, but we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, Richard uh, will be looking at the debugger. And Friday, we're gonna be looking to uh, Python. And I think we'll, we'll keep going uh, 
keep that going next week with maybe uh, some GitHub, looking at the GitHub integration and so forth. All right. Stay tuned and uh, stay safe.